Welcome in to Greenville Grit. Greenville residents in touch on 103.7 WTIB. This is the local show that keeps you connected and in touch with the issues that affect what's happening in your community. Greenville Grit is sponsored by Ribeyes, Kid Construction, and Greenville Toyota. Now, here are your hosts for Greenville Grit, Terry Williams and Michael Overton. Good evening and welcome to Greenville Grit. I'm Terry Williams. I'm Michael Overton. Terry, good to see you this afternoon. Good to see you. Here we are in the midst of candidate election That's season. Right. We have another prospective candidate. Well, he is a candidate, prospective council member coming That's on right. with us tonight. PJ Conley, District 5 for City of Greenville, uh, running against Rick Crossbury. PJ, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for inviting yes, me. Welcome. Uh, we uh, are going to get into him, find out who PJ Conley is, why he's running, and, and what he can bring to the city that we love so much. And before we do it, though, Terry, we always thank the sponsors that allow the show to it. go on. So That's thank right. you so much. Greenville Toyota for continued support since day one. Day one. Been with us all along. That's right. So if you're looking for a new Toyota or Scion or a new used car, go see Craig Gullis and the Greenville Toyota team. You can visit them on the web at greenvilletoyota.com, 321-3000, or across from Fresh Market on Memorial Drive. Also, Ribeye Steakhouse. Yes. They've been with us thank quite you, a while, Ribeyes. too. They have been. Mention Greenville Grit. You're supposed to get a surprise. I haven't checked on that in a while <laughs> because I just uh, I just eat and forget to ask. But um, good steaks, baked potatoes, great salad bar, great atmosphere. Make sure you visit them on the corner of Arlington and Fire Tower Road in Greenville, as well as in Williamston, close to the Bob Martin Agricultural Center. Right across the street. And mm-hmm. also the Urban Group Real Estate Professional, serving all of eastern North Carolina, business brokerage, commercial real estate leasing sales, property management, and real estate brokerage. So we're going to take a two-minute commercial break, come back, and get into discussions with the District 5 uh, running uh, for City Council, City of Greenville. Be back in two. Welcome back to the Greenville Grid. I am Michael Overton, along with my co-host Terry. Terry, we had Eric Anderson last uh, week on right. for the at-large seat, and and we've got this week District Five candidate. So welcome, PJ Conley. For thank you for coming on the show today. Thank you for inviting me. So who is PJ Conley? That's the first thing we like to ask. Uh, where are you from, uh, and and kind of your history and ties to Greenville, and, and then we'll get into why you're running. Sure, sure. Um, I moved here to Greenville. I'm originally from Wisconsin. I moved here in 2003. Oh. And I attended ECU. I played baseball for East Carolina oh, cool. for 2000, the 2004-2005 <laughs> season. Um, as soon as I finished up my career here, I went and played professionally in uh, Winnipeg uh, for a year. And I came back and finished my degree the fall semester. Okay. Um, so I graduated in 2005. Uh, I stayed here and then ended up signing with the uh, Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. Oh, wow. and I played for two years in the professional cool. baseball. And uh, as soon as I finished up my career, I came back here. I was able to get my real estate license and worked under Keller Williams for a couple of years. And then we opened up our own company, my mm-hmm. wife and I did, in 2000, the end of 2007. Oh, wow, that's really well, interesting. I, I think uh, you and I first <laughs> met was about 2007. Absolutely. And I believe you're still with Keller Williams at the time. So I've so, known you for a few years, obviously getting to know you a little bit better because you're conveniently living across the street from me. So <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, anyway... Thank you for the intro, and, and uh, I know you've got those ties to ECU and, and has continued to bring you back to the community here, but uh, I, the big question today is, and, and the reason we're here is, is District 5, City Council, kind of tell, tell us your interest in the whole politics. Where did it come from, and, and now why are you running? Well, you know, I've always had an interest in politics. I think the thing that really brought me into it is I, I feel like we need a change. I mean, I think Greenville has kind of gotten off the emphasis of moving forward with a pro-business approach. Uh, one of the things that you know, it's really bothered me over the years is, you know, continuous tax increases, um, you know, and less mm-hmm. focus on, you know, growing our tax base instead of, you know, ta- what they're doing is that instead of growing our tax base through, you know, keeping people here, bringing more jobs to the community, I think it's more or less, you know, we need to make up for that, that difference, and we're just taxing people more. Um, so that's one of the things that I guess that's really brought me into it. Um, you know, I'd really like to be able to create more jobs here, help do that, and then, um, you know, I guess make incentives for for bringing businesses here. I mean, that's that's one of my main focuses. That's really important. And I know you you have. Do you have children? I do. I've, yes. I have one one uh, daughter that is about two and a half years old now. Okay. So you have a lot to look for her future. You want her her growing up years to be in Greenville. So I'm sure that you care a lot about what happens, um, you know, throughout the community because 
of your interest in what's going on with kids around here and what can be provided for them. So tell us a, a little bit about um, anything else in the community that you might have been involved in that would kind of shed a light on what you're really like and what your interests are. Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, aside from playing, you know, baseball at right. ECU, um, you know, I'm also just recently uh, the mayor. Uh, I guess put me on the uh, planning and zoning commission. So okay. I've been a part of that. I've had I've been to a couple of meetings mm -hmm. and I've really enjoyed doing that. Um, I've also been on a homeowners association at our previous neighborhood that we used to right. live in. So okay. um, I've been a part of different things like that um, right. through the community. Well, being in real estate, we are all three of us. And, uh, right, so, so you, it really um, you have a huge interest in what happens throughout the city because of your career and because of the people that you serve in your in your business you know your buy, buyer sellers or if you do rentals management whatever Absolutely. you do so i know that that plays an important part with see with your seeing what's going to happen to greenville and so we have discussed quite frequently how unhappy we are with things that have been going on with the council so um if, if you are elected or when you are elected uh, in november what are some of the um, interests or the areas that you think you'd like to see improve well um you know one of the one of the things that I've really discussed. I'd really like to, you know, I guess take more of an emphasis on, you know, increasing business. I mean, I think one of the things that, that needs to, that people don't talk about is, you know, we have East Carolina University here mm -hmm. and we have tons and tons of students that graduate every single year. You know, one of the things that we have problems with is maintaining and keeping those, those students right. here in our community. I mean, we've got a great programs um, through the university that, you know, teach these, these students um, you know, great things, and what they do is they, they learn and get their education here, and then they leave Greenville. Mm -hmm. They don't have the opportunities to get jobs um, that are suitable for their, you know, their degrees here. Mm -hmm. You know, I think we need to put more of an emphasis on, you know, growing businesses, bringing incentives to Greenville. You know, we need to also help the, the businesses that are here right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, there needs to be um, some assistance to some of those those current businesses that are here so you currently are in would be in favor then of the economic development absolutely commission that we have that had has, had, had. had we're not seeing too much being done no. right now with that and and to the best of my knowledge i haven't heard that anybody has been hired yeah. to replace I, I carl think, yet unless they prove me wrong i don't think there's any emphasis on rehiring for to that be. position they didn't want it to begin with that's right so but you would be in favor of continuing that because I feel like, you know, and, and I know when you're on the council, you have lots of different areas that you are responsible for keeping up with. But this seems to be the one catalyst that would keep the city going. And there just doesn't seem to be any talk or emphasis from our council members about that whole department or the fact that it's not being staffed right now by a, by a leader, so to speak. So um, I would just was wondering if that's what you were in favor of continuing yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. I mean, that's I think that's a big thing. I mean, I went to the, the city website the other day. And I was looking at you know, the incentive packages that mm -hmm. the city offers. There was four incentive packages, mm -hmm. you know, and, and one of them was for, you know, I guess fixing the facades of buildings. Right. You know, I mean, I think we need to make more of an emphasis on, on helping these these mm -hmm. companies, you know, come to Greenville or the ones that are currently here, you know, to increase their workforce. Right. And that's going to help out our community. It's going to help out our tax base. And it's going to provide more opportunities for the people that live here in Greenville and that will be moving to Greenville. Mm -hmm. That's right. Well, I think that's one of the things. I actually visited a building this morning that was a textile mill mm -hmm. uh, here in Greenville Mohawk out okay. there on the yeah. corner of Dickinson and Hooker and, and 90,000 square feet. Used to have two to 300 jobs. Oh, yeah. Closed down seven months ago, moved their operations. Mm -hmm. Company's still doing well, but they're no longer in Greenville. Right. So you, you have two issues. You have an empty building. You got to find someone, hopefully, mm -hmm. to take it, and, and, and it's historic. So possibly do something with it if they can find it. Right. But the other thing is we have the loss of two to 300 jobs. And what could we have done as a community to have stopped those jobs from leaving? If you've got an antiquated building that's expensive to run, what can the city do to incentivize these guys to stay and, and not move their operations, but if anything, to move additional operations here? So uh, and I think one of the, my criticisms, PJ, and that's what I wouldn't mind hearing you speak for, is I feel like over the last two years, you know, before the last election, it was always about Allen's 4-2 block. All the votes were 4-2, and it was pretty consistently over a two-year period is 4-2. Well, over the last two years, it's been 4-2 uh, the other way. And I don't know how much you've studied the city politics of things, but what do you see as an issue? What's wrong with our current city council now, and what can you do to bridge the divide and, and hopefully carry our city forward? Because we're losing – and I know Calvin Mercer had, had really criti criticized uh, – 
Alan and Dennis and the guys when they'd won through what back in 2013, right. Jerry, about we lost the city manager and, and lost the I think the chief planner and a couple other guys. But just in the last several months, we've lost our police chief, we've lost our economic development director, we've lost our assistant city manager, and I've heard of other people, other people that it's are coming, looking to I, leave. I and I think to. a lot of it, and I even heard from one of them. I'm not going to say who. The reason that they left was because they were concerned about the politics that were going to be hitting this fall and. And so whether it's it's the Allen side or the Calvin side, it's not good for the city either way. How do we bridge that and move the city forward? Well, you know, I think one of the things, you know, in politics that you've got to understand is there's there's compromise with everything. You know, and I think at this point when whenever there is just a 4-2 vote, um, every single situation, there's no compromise. You know, so there's no middle ground. Um, I think that – you know, you, you have to, you know, work with, with both sides and understand there's, there's two sides to, to every situation. And I think that's one of the big problems that they face right now with the city council. And I think a lot of things are getting pushed back, and I don't think anything's getting really done right mm-hmm. now. I think one of the things that they need to do is, you know, you, you need people to lead. I mean, the whole point of getting into this position is to lead. Right. You know, and you need to be able to work with, you know, both sides just so – um, you know, things get done. I mean, things, things right now, just, they just are not getting done. And I think what's happening is people are getting sidetracked and we're, we're dealing with different things that, you know, that to me aren't a big situation as far as, you know, extending council terms, you know, having term limits and things like that. You know, I'm, I'm definitely in, in favor of that. But to me, I think, you know, worrying about the infrastructure of our city, right. fixing our roads, you know, those, those are items that need to be addressed, and, and, and they need leadership. You know, somebody to step in and say, hey, we need to, we need to go ahead and, and get this done. Um, this is important for, for the city and for the people of Greenville. As far as I know, this audit that they kept talking about, is that that's, that's in the process of an audit for some funds? The federal that, government audit? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm not, I, I'm not I really, really familiar that with either, that. But, but um, we haven't heard much discussion. I guess it's just moving on. We haven't heard much discussion about that. We also haven't heard much discussion about... I still feel like that this council still ought to be looking back at the budget and seeing where other cuts can be made because we've still got things that need to be done that the bond coming up in November isn't going to cover. And I feel like that all that conversation has just stopped, that nothing has been talked about, that what that bond will cover and what are, what are the plans going forward. They just don't seem to be making any plans for anything, like he said. I, I don't understand it. It's just everything's quiet on the home front. <laughs> well, they do take the month of July off. I know. And so uh, that, that's and I know Alan has been up at, at Harvard University, but which is well, great for talk, this I community. Know, I think it'd be fun to it's it's fun to be a backseat <laughs> driver, which is why Terry and I like sitting here and not yeah, really. up there. But so let's talk about maybe some of the things that were the more controversial items over the last couple of years, PJ. And then I wouldn't mind hearing you respond. Yeah, sure. Looking back at that, what sure. would you do differently? And I, I critique I criticized one of the council members when they they told me that they had to raise taxes, and my response was. You may have, but why now? Could you not have waited three months until the audit came out? And there was no answer. He couldn't give an answer to it Mm -mm. because he knew I was right. Sure. Um, so let, let's pick some items. Terry. Because sometimes I think they take the what they think is the easy road. Well, it's knee jerk. It, it, it's a reactive yes, it council. Is. Now I have called it that, and, and and it is it is the absolute truth. Our council now is a reactive council. Right. Proactive and reactive are I two agree. complete polar opposites. And, and so, I don't know, pick, pick an item. Let's, let's <laughs> pick see how item. PJ's going to respond to this one. <laughs> well, you know the bond's coming up on the ballot. So how did you feel about the Well, you the had bond? to pick the hottest one first, didn't you? <laughs> Why not? Let's just, <laughs> let's just get in it. I mean, the bond's coming up if everything falls into place, and it seems like that it is. As far I haven't heard anything haven't different heard about that. About it. That, um, that it will um, move forward and probably, I think there was another step or two to make sure that it was on the ballot, but. When we had Dave on, we were talking about that briefly, but he felt like that was going to fall into place. So if you um, – how, how would you look at a bond schedule? What would you feel about uh, the city council meeting after the election? I think they should – at this point, they won't meet before and set up any type of a bond schedule. Probably wait and see what happens if there is turnover on the city council in November or how it proceeds forward. How do you feel about and what do you think is important about setting up some sort of a bond schedule, you know, like for the years to come? How are we going to plan ahead? Um, Okay, we get this bond passed in November. We start working on the road, which really is only going to be Arlington, you know, and I know they're they're using some of the funds – 
that were already in place of the five million has probably already been allocated now at this point, you know, to, to fix up some other roads. But I was on Martinsboro today. I've been, you know, we're in real estate, so we're all over the place um, in all sorts of neighborhoods. We've got a big mess. We still have a mess. So we've got to do something beyond the bond. So when we met with the advisory um, committee, we suggested they start put together some sort of bond schedule. Whether it's every five years, and three years, five, five years, bonds. whatever it is. Um, it, when's the last one that we, we did? Was it? Um, 2004 mm -hmm. and um and i think we i think we waited too long um you know to get this next bond done so how do, how do you feel about a bond schedule and how would you what do you think we would do about moving forward with that in that area you have to you have know? a schedule i mean it, it comes down to you know past you know council uh council's not you know setting up a a, a budget to be able to you know every year they need to make improvements to the roads mm -hmm. it, it doesn't need to be left out and it doesn't need to come up every 10 years i right. mean what happens is you know if you wait 10 years you know you have to have a, a bond referendum like this and you have to ask for almost 16 million dollars mm -hmm. you know which over the life of that term you know i was reading up on it it's 6.4 million dollars in mm -hmm. interest for a 20-year bond for this 20-year bond that they're getting mm -hmm. you know that's six million dollars that we could be using as a city to put somewhere else and if, if you don't set it up systematically that you're going to, you know, every year, you know, put $2 million or 20, you know, $2.5 million towards road construction, mm -hmm. um, it's going to happen over and over. And I mean, I, I think six point, yeah, $6.4 million for, for interest, you know, is an excessive amount. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's something that has to be done, though. I mean, the have roads are in, are in disrepair right now. Um, but unfortunately, bonds should not be for repairs and maintenance. Right. Absolutely. And, and so what do, what do we do as a city? I mean, the budget's a, a big deal. Uh, and I'm really, uh, we're going to get Terry Boardman on too, because one of the things I want to hear, he's running for District 4, is he's, he's, he's studied those numbers. And uh, part of my concern as a city is you go and you raise taxes because, you know, we can't pay our bills. But then Terry Boardman pops up and says, hey, they got $8 million sitting in a vehicle, vehicle replacement fund. Mm -hmm. I mean, the city's got cash flush everywhere, but nobody knows what they have. Sure. So what, how do we get our hands around all this money that supposedly is in all of these funds and make sure that we are funding the repairs and maintenance, not just of roads, but of our city uh, buildings. Well, how do we do this? I mean, you're going to have to sit down and go item by item and look through that right. budget. I mean, each there, department. there, each department has money in it and each department probably has excess money in it, mm -hmm. you know, and we have to look through and see what's important, what what's needed in the city of Greenville. There's there's money out there. I mean, it's just a matter of going down. I mean, it's like running a business. You you have to go through and you have to make a budget and, and you have to budget certain ways. So certain things that are important do get funded, mm -hmm. you know, and there's other things that, that, you know, things change as years go on. Sometimes, you know, you may you may have, uh, you know, things come up where you know, you don't need as much money this this year in the budget as you did in the past. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you need to go through, and we need to go by item by item and just see what needs to be done. Um, so is that, does that mean you you suggest that the council go back to the 2013, 2000, or 12, 2013 yeah. council and the council members themselves study that budget? Because Absolutely. this last budget that was passed, they went right back to the old ways. The city manager brings it, they approve it, and never study it. No, I mean that's that's part of being on the council. I mean, your well, your job right. is you're 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 helping run the city. I mean, you need there, there's a con accountability, um, and and you need to go through and look at it individually, and you need to ask questions. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's there's no reason that you would just have somebody come up and, and bring you a budget and say this is okay. I mean, you're not doing your job. Well, I think and Dennis, um, you know, has told us a couple several times on the show of how they did that. Each department came to those council members and explained you know, where all their funds were and if they had excess funds somewhere. And that just didn't happen with this last time. And so I don't think the council members know where the money is. They don't, they don't have a clue where it is. And then all of a sudden we end up with an audit that has this not, I don't, everything I've read about the audit isn't a positive <laughs> that we're oh, having no, to go through this. You don't want the this. feds coming in <laughs> studying your I'm numbers. just sorry. Nothing <laughs> sounds real good about that. So It's not um, even a state deal. It's the feds. Right, exactly. So I, I just, I'm not happy about hearing that as just a citizen that this is happening to us. So if they, that was a much smaller amount of money that could have been mismanaged. I'm not sure. I'm not saying that they mismanaged it, but it's mishandled. Maybe that's a better word. So what else are we looking at in our budget 
that could be mishandled or put somewhere where it really doesn't need to be and we've got big problems what else are we going to find sure, sure because this council just doesn't seem to be on top of it and I, th and I think I read too that it's I think it's forty seven thousand dollars we have to pay for an audit now yes. just to find out what's going on so there's mm -hmm. more money out of our budget that's right well, and I think, PJ, but you, you know how this works, especially in, in, well, it happens in companies, but also definitely happens in the bureaucracy. If a department has, to say, a million-dollar budget and they're getting towards the end of their budget year and they've only spent 600000 they've got to spend that money sure. or else they're going to lose that budget. Sure. And I, I think there's a lot of waste that goes on in there because people are scared they're going to get their budgets cut because you keep coming consistently in under budget – they're going to say, well, you obviously don't need this much money. We're going to cut you back. Well, then all of a sudden they may need it the next year. They don't have it. Sure. I mean, I, I would love to see some type of incentives given out. I don't have a problem paying people incentives to be more efficient. Sure. Right, exactly. And, and if you say, you know what, come in at $600,000, we'll give you X percent of this, you know, to go to every one of your employees for being more efficient. Sure. Think about the trash collector. If this trash collector goes out and collects 500 uh, cans a day, Maybe they could do with that. I already know this from from one of the people in there. They had they had one group doing a thousand a day. Right. Yeah. Can yeah. You imagine if you get that, you could probably get away with a third less budget than what the city's giving them. But they're not going to do that because they're going to lose it. They don't have the incentive. They're not getting the extra money to be given out. Sure. Sure. Right. I mean, if you and if you save money too, uh, you know, another thing you could, it can also be passed back to the employees. I mean, I know that's been right. a hot topic too recently. That you know, a lot of a lot of city workers were concerned about their pay, and I mean, that's that's an opportunity. If you save money, you actually have more money to give back to the the city employees as well. So, I mean, that's to me, I think it's in the council's best interest to to go back and look at the budget and 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 make the cuts that are needed to be to be made. Well, I, I want to clear something up too before we go okay. to break, Terry. Last week when we were on the on with Eric, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the discussion came up about our council member being made up of several state funded employees and, right and so some things were said but i do want to clarify because i surely don't want it to ever be mistook that right. i was criticizing people in the in the public sector right. who are teachers right. or exactly or uh, city or state employees mm -hmm. because they're obviously very important for the job right. that they do my criticism comes specifically to our city council if you're asking people to go out and create jobs and to bring to build uh, an economy and to bring jobs here, then you need people that who have experience in doing these things. And when you have no one on our city council that has ever had that experience of bringing and creating jobs, how can you expect our city to bring and create jobs? And or I think even that's know about issue. it or have a clue of even how to attract it because well, they haven't ever had to do it and that's that's my frustration that's right. so i'm sorry if i offended anyone last week but that, that's i wanted to clarify right, exactly. it's important to me you put the right people in the right places and as a voter if you're going to go out in november 15 to 20 percent of municipal uh, is all the people that vote right that's right 15 to 20 percent it's going to so be super important if your this taxes year go up <laughs> if you're everybody not going votes. out to vote that's so right we're going to take our second commercial break we'll come back with pj conley again who's running for district five city council and we'll be back in two minutes Welcome back to Greenville Grill again. Michael Overton along with Terry Williams. We have P.J. Conley on here. P.J.'s running for City Council, Greenville City Council, District 5. And P.J., at break, you brought up something big. Let's, let's go into it and start the same way you just said it to us. Okay. One of, the, one of the big things I think no one's really talked about as far as uh, the tax increase, and this isn't so much a tax increase, but in 2016, all the property values um, are being reevaluated, and it's going on right now. And on August 3rd, the tax department will have records of this year. Of this, of this, of this year, year mm -hmm. we'll have tax. We'll have the tax records available on what the property values will be starting in 2016. And and one of the things that has not been mentioned yet is, you know, these these records are going to be coming out. And what's going to happen is, I, I can tell you, all three of us are in real estate. Mm -hmm. Property values have not dropped no. over the last no, two they're years. Going, they're going back up. Yeah. yeah. So you know, that's another increase that people are going to see in addition to this 2.25 percent or 2.2 2 cent 2.25 cent right. increase um <laughs> in the taxes right now that they're proposing for the bond you know so this is another increase on that top are, of the on, tax increases from last year that right. still have not been repealed that's exactly right so i mean you know you're going to see from last year i mean you could see maybe a three to four cent increase just in your taxes this year just based off of you know the new evaluation that's going to be coming forward and people will be able to see that in August 
um, and, and they can go down to the tax department and, and, and get well, that information from them. I wonder when they'll be mailing those out. You, know, you usually get it ahead, and then they give you so many months or whatever to appeal it. Mm -hmm. yeah, like appeal um, does any good. Yeah, it doesn't do very much good. Absolutely. Unless you've sold a property and you can take a HUD and you can prove that your property is much less valued than what the, when it was says on that tax card, you can just forget it, really. Well, but that all boils down to what I also said when we were just discussing it. I haven't heard this council mention it. In all these talks about tax increases, tax increases, the bond, no questions asked about what's going to happen the when, with the reevaluation, which well, could easily be cost people more. And i got to cut you off because you we sure reached do. the end of the show. PJ, <laughs> thank you again for coming on. I really appreciate your insight and good luck in running this campaign. Um, how can they really, really quickly, how can they make a donation to you? Do you have anything set up? Or? Yeah, I mean, we have a Facebook page set up. They're, they're more than welcome to contact us. We have, we have, uh, <laughs> no, uh, okay, okay, we have, we have a, uh, we have a <laughs> Facebook page. They can go ahead and, and, and go to so our look Facebook up, page. PJ Conley. Thank you for joining <laughs> in until next week.